one and a RAID 5. The idea is supposed to be in, I mean, a RAID 0 and a RAID 5. And you're not going to see normally a RAID 1 because the idea was that it was mirrored and that you actually had a copy of the disk. And RAID 6, you've got another parity drive or another drive with distributed parity on it. So RAID 5 and RAID 0 are the two most common you're going to see most of the time. So <coughs> RAID 0, because it's a stripe, it is not redundant. If you don't have one of the drives, you got nothing. It ha you have to get some part of that other drive. So I call them AIDs because they shouldn't be called RAID. Uh, it's, an, it's an array of independent drives that suck. So if you get that, and it's worse if you've got more of them. Cause, so you can just imagine, okay, instead of having two drives, I've got six drives. How bad you could get AIDS? That's pretty bad. So, so don't do that. If you start seeing that, that guy, normally they're using it for video processing. But these days, uh, I mean, people doing it like in Macs with soft RAID and stuff like that. It's a common thing. They just keep plugging drives in and say, give me a big giant amount of space so I can have three terabyte or something. Wrong. That's a bad way to go. No backup. How are you going to back that up anyway? But uh, anyway, so that ends up being the problem. Very, very uh, uh, prone to errors. Any one drive fails and it's over. So here's the pretty picture I already showed and talked about. And then that you can have, just as an example, if you end up having two drives or more, I mean, if you just look at this, once you actually get to like four drives, you can have up to 72 different combinations of the order of the drives. And if you can't figure that out, it's really hard for software to figure it out for you. Uh, there are some pieces of software. Uh, there's a company called Runtime who will actually take the software and run an entropy test against the data and try to figure out what the slice sizes are and then tell it back to you. Um, it works sometimes, and when it's right, it's right. When it's wrong, it's, it's always wrong. So that's kind of the, the gray area there. But most of the time, you've got to figure this out on your own, which means you're going to manually be swapping data dynamically to try to figure out what these things are. So I've come up with a way to try to do this kind of by sight and sound. Most of the time, you can figure out what your first drive is. The reason is, is if it has an MBR on it of any kind, has a partition table, most of the time it's at the beginning. It's, it's going to be in the first chunk of data. So if you've got, say, NTFS and you've got your partition table, you're going to be at sector 63, and it's going to look like this. So if you get this, that's the first drive. Normally, I mean, you can change it or whatever, but by default, that's the way most of them are because they format both drives and they use the whole chunk together to actually make their volumes you know, stripe together or whatever. So you can usually tell which one's the first one. So you get the first one almost for free. The rest of them you got to figure out. So if you only have two drives in a RAID 0, you could probably figure that out pretty quickly. <coughs> so, so that's just the information to back it up. So uh, ultimately, the point is, is that you're going to have to guess at some sort of slice size. So once you've figured out, oh, I got the first drive, I have three other drives, what order do I put them in? And you try to dynamically create this. You're going to have to swap through those three choices. And then you're going to try to do something. Now, in my world, it's really easy for me to figure this out by trying to use a JPEG, GIFs, some sort of graphic, or even MP3s. Almost everybody who has a RAID array, even if it was just a basic install uh, of Windows or something on this RAID array, it's got sample pictures in it. So ultimately, what ends up happening is you take it, you guess your stripe, and you don't, you don't try to reassemble the rest of the array. All you do is you say, scan for JPEGs. And you can tell the identifier that you're going to scan for. I'll demo it and show you how to do it shortly. And then you extract the JPEGs, and then you look at them in size. So this is how you figure out what the stripe size is. So I've got two drives, and let's say one was set for a 64K uh, stripe size, and then they're weaved together. What's going to happen is I'm going to have half of a picture over here, and the other piece of a picture is going to be over here. And they're going to go back and forth between the drives. So it's not going to look contiguous if I'm looking at the same picture. Uh, we got fragmentation, a few other things. But most of the time, it's going to be contiguous space. So what you do is you extract these JPEGs, and then you look at what the possibilities for the controllers were. And by default, almost all of them use the same basic setup. Uh, and again, since the default normally is 64, some, some, you know, some guy's going to be sitting there going, I'm making a RAID array. Let's not choose 64. Let's play with this setting. You know, some guys do that. I, I don't know, you know. I'm sure they're for you know, database optimization. But those aren't the guys sending me the drives because they would know that by that time. So, so what you do is you extract all these JPEGs, right? And you'll have a whole slew of different sizes. You'll have small thumbnails. You'll have medium-sized pictures. You'll get, you know, somebody took it with a 5-megapixel camera, and you're getting, you know, 2 and 3, 4 megs. So you can actually take a look at these files and see what size it actually works in. Because if you have, let's say, a 32K stripe, any thumb, thumb, thumbnails that are smaller than 32K are going to look fine. Anything over 32K, and you have to look at repetitively at more than one 
just to make sure that you're not looking at one that had a boundary at the time that it split. But uh, typically, you can see it pretty quickly. The majority of the pictures are going to be 32K are going to be OK, then 64K. If it's still under 64K, say 58K, it will still look OK. The picture will still look fine, and so on and so on, all the way through the segment. So you just keep picking sizes after that. So this is what we're talking about. You know, how do you know when you're wrong with your slice size and you can go and guess the right slice size? So all right, so you extract one of these, these pictures, and this is the kind of stuff you'll see you'll see it's completely missing this whole middle portion, and we want that middle portion. I can tell you, we want them. We, you know, although a girl with a head right I don't, anyway, uh, ultimately the whole point is, is that, you know, this was a fairly large file. We're missing a, a chunk in the middle. This is something that you guys can normally recognize. So this was a 140K file. These are the default samples that are like on a Windows disk or something. So, so around 140K, if you actually look at this, you can almost figure out, hey, look, I got a 64K. You know, it's about the middle of the picture before you actually keep on going. And then it continues on correctly. So I know right off the bat I'm looking at a drive. I'm looking at there's only two drives in this stripe. So this is a RAID 0, and the stripes are actually 64K in size. I can physically see that just by glancing at it, as opposed to trying to use some fancy way of doing something. And then if I get smaller than that, these are 32K files. So these are small 32K files. They're completely intact, nothing wrong with them. This is a thumbnail, and this is like 58K, something around that range. And this is a thumbnail. You know, JPEGs can have a JPEG embedded in them. So you can have a thumbnail that's embedded in a larger JPEG. So when I extracted this, I got the thumbnail, and the thumbnail was small and looked fine. The real picture, however, which was over that, it was completely screwed up. So I could not get this picture back in this fashion, but you can start to see where you're looking at. So over 58K or so, I know I'm at least at 64K. I can go up the chain until I get to 128K. Some of these RAID arrays, especially the boxes you buy you know, off the shelf or something, a buffalo or something, might have a 512K slice. You may have to go all the way up to 512K to actually get these things out of them. And then uh, this one's slightly over 64K. You can see I'm only losing the bottom. You know, Even if the other junk that was in here can you hold the question until we get close to the end? Just because i got a limited amount of time and I'm going to try to do a demo too, but I'll, I'll, I'll get to it. So, uh, so in, the, in the stripe, as you're looking through the content, you can actually see, well, you know, in sequence, the JPEG's actually going to look okay. Even if it continued on after this, it's probably not going to display it. It's just going to be crap. And so that's what ends up happening here. And same thing when you get into the bigger pictures. O over 2 meg, you can start to see that you've got some real problems here with size and things that are showing up. This is a large raw file. So, you know, if you guys know what a raw file is coming straight off the camera, they're pretty large files. And you can see, you know, the checkerboard status, you know, the whole thing. So you can start figuring out what your slice is. And then once you actually get it right, you're actually going to see the file that actually comes together. So, 700K file on this particular one that I actually did. And then I've got one other kind of example. It, let's say that, you know, for the most part, somebody's just got like an iTunes library. Maybe you just don't find, I mean, it's going to be kind of hard to believe you don't find any JPEGs. But let's say they got an iTunes library or something. Let me, uh, let me play something here for you real quick. And hopefully it will sound loud enough. know where it's at. It's here somewhere. So, and this, you know, the same idea happens with movies and other video files, but movies are a lot harder for it to play consecutively. And then, so this is what it will sound like when you get stripe size. Now, depending on the compression inside, you know, you got VMR, you got different compression sizes for MP3s. It may not be exactly the size you expect when you see it before and after, but you'll get things like this where it's a mixed library and you'll get. Yeah. <laughs> and there's a bunch of that kind of stuff. Uh, all right, so, so that's kind of my basics of RAID 0. I want to tell you about RAID 5 before I do the demo so we can just kind of uh, let me see where I was. All right, so RAID 5.